Hello and welcome to Practice Web. You're watching this video because you are ready to take your practice to the next level of productivity and achieve the paperless office by converting your old software. The purpose of the database conversion checklist is to make sure that our support can effectively communicate with your office during the conversion process and that you have reviewed the accuracy of the data converted based on the information we were able to extract from the data file of your former software. So let's go over the checklist now. Section 1 begins with our introduction. Please note we must have this checklist returned before we can schedule or perform a final conversion. For your convenience, this form can be filled out electronically and will receive notification right away once it is completed. Section 2 is the Client Information section. All the fields with a red asterisk are required fields. Using any computer or device that is connected to the internet, you can fill out the information on the form. Enter the first name, last name, and the practice name. If your practice operates as a legal entity, please make sure to note this in the field, for example, My Dental Office LLC. For the contact information, if anyone like an office manager or anyone other than the doctor is placed in charge of handling the conversion, please make sure to note that person's information in the next three fields. If your IT professional is going to be involved in the installation and conversion process to practice web, please make sure that you provide their information in this field so we can communicate with them. Section 3 is the information of the software you are converting from as well as your digital x-ray information. Because the conversion routine is different for each software and version, the name and version number of your current software is very important. It is also important for us to know the imaging software, as images are typically stored separately. Practice Web uses a bridge to connect to many different imaging softwares. For example, if you're in John Doe's chart module and you click on the Quick Vision button, it should automatically bring up John Doe's x-rays in Quick Vision. This bridge will only work if the information converts properly. Section 4 is for your practice ownership. There are many different scenarios that could apply to your particular ownership status. For example, if you're a dentist and you have owned your current practice for several years and you're converting to practice web so you can have a more state-of-the-art or paperless office, you would check box number one. If you've owned your practice for a few years but may not be sure of the accuracy of your outstanding accounts, you could check box number two. The next four check boxes would apply to a new practice owner buying an existing office. For example, if you're buying the practice and taking ownership of the accounts receivable, check box number three. If you're buying the practice, but not the outstanding balances, then you would check box number four. The last two check boxes are if you do not want to convert the account balances for your patients. If you have any questions on this section or how to fill it out, you can always call our conversion specialist for additional help. Section 5 is where you'll actually review the patient's information that converted into practice web. You must check this box before you can proceed. If you have selected to convert your AR balances, please put the total of your AR from your old software in this field. Now go into the reports menu in practice web and click on standard. 
In the monthly section, you'll see the aging of AR. Since you're converting, there is no need to change the filters. Just click OK to generate the report. The balance that shows on this report should match the balance from your old software. The balance on this report is what you'll enter into the second field of this section. Now we're going to look at the patient details in each of the practice web modules. You can use five patients that you know have recent accounts as of the day the data was extracted from your old software. Please note that any data entered into your old software after the date we did the extraction will not be found in the test conversion. Now to ensure the highest level of accuracy, we do recommend 10 patients. To select a patient in Practice Web, click on the Select Patient button in the upper left-hand corner of the software. In the fields on the right, you can type the last name and the first name of your patient. See how the list will shorten? You can click on the patient's name so it is highlighted gray, then click OK. You can see that my patient's name is now visible in the title bar of the software. Now starting in the family module, you can just click on the button with the people. This is your family module where you can see all of your patient details. Here you'll see the patient's information. And for security purposes, you can always see the first few numbers and letters of the address. But if you open this patient's account in your old software, the first few numbers and letters should be the same. In multiple family accounts, there's a guarantor or financially responsible party. In Practice Web, your guarantor shows up in bold text. If your former software allows for multiple patient accounts, whoever the guarantor is in your old software should be in bold text in Practice Web. If your patient has insurance, you want to look at the employer, carrier name, group name or number, and the percentages of the benefits. All of this information should match the insurance information in your old software. Let's look in the account module. That is the button with the money graphic. Typically, old claims and payment history don't convert, but are identified by an adjustment line. So if you look at this patient's account in your old software, and they have a $400 balance, you should see a line item in Practice Web that looks like this. And in the top of the account, it'll say $400. If the old software is capable of converting the old adjustments, they may show up as an additional line, or they may show up in the communication log as a financial note type. Completed procedures usually only convert in the chart module. Again, as you're going through this checklist, if you have any questions, you can always call our conversion specialist. If at any point you begin filling out this checklist and you have to pause at the bottom of the checklist, you'll see a button that says Save and Return Later. Once you click this button, it'll give you a link. Copy that link and paste it into a Word document. Save that document to your desktop for easy access later. That way, if you have to close your browser, or if it accidentally gets closed by one of your other staff members, you can simply open the document and click on the link, and you'll be able to come back to where you left off.
The next thing you're going to check is your appointments. Click on the appointments module. Again, make sure you're looking at a day that occurred prior to the day that your data was extracted. Any information entered into your old software after the date of the extraction won't be seen yet. As you look at the appointments module, look at your old software and just make sure that the patient's appointments are the correct date and time and in the correct operatories. You may also want to check to make sure that there are the appropriate appointment length. Now let's look at the chart module. The first check mark asks you if the procedure status is correct. Not all conversions will process the procedure history in the same way. The procedures will most likely convert as EC or existing current provider. This lets you know that these procedures were done prior to your conversion of practice web. Next, you want to check if the treatment plans converted. So you look in your old software and see if the treatment plans there match what you see in the chart and the treatment plan module in practice web. You also want to look at the graphics. If you look in the progress notes and see an MOD on tooth number 30, you should see that painted on the graphical tooth chart. You can also look and see if the clinical notes converted if your old software had that feature. The last section is for miscellaneous information. This is your main toolbar in Practice Web. If you click on the list menu, and then click on insurance carriers. You can see if this list matches the list of carriers in your old software. Here you'll also find your insurance plans. If you notice a lot of duplicate plans, you can ask our support specialist about having these combined in the final conversion. And you'll also want to check your medications and your list of referrals. To test the bridge, you would find the button with the name of your imaging software on it. If it brings up your selected patient's x-rays, then you know that the bridge is working properly. Section 6 is for planning on how you'll bill your insurance after the conversion. Since it is most likely that your outstanding claims will not convert, but the balance will be reflected properly in the patient's account, then you'll use the payment type for insurance check unmatched. This will allow you to enter payments on any claims not found in practice web. We'll provide you with additional training on this prior to your final conversion. For your patient billing, it is a good idea to verify that all of your completed procedures have been billed to the insurance company and to run a patient billing statement cycle prior to your final conversion. This way you know that the information of account balances that converts is the most recent for your patient balances. Please make sure to take a few minutes to read through the acknowledgement section. For our support to help make your transition as smooth as possible, making sure that your computers are capable of running the practice web application by being on a compatible operating system is very important. If a computer upgrade is required, it is best to upgrade your computers before the final conversion. The final conversion really is final. There will be no changes made after the final conversion is completed. So if you need to, you can always save the information you fill out on this form, consult with our conversion specialist, and then come back and complete this form later if you have any questions. Once you have put a check mark in the acknowledgments checkbox, then you can sign the form electronically. If you're using a computer with a standard mouse and keyboard, you can use the mouse to draw your name. Or if you're using a tablet to complete the form, you can use your finger or stylus to sign. Now you can click on Submit Agreement. Our conversion team will receive your completed form right away and contact you to schedule the date of your final conversion. You will also receive a follow-up call from one of our specialists that will complete the new customer training within 24 to 48 hours of your final conversion being delivered. Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial 
and our team is committed to helping your office get the best start possible. If you need any further assistance, please call us at 800-845-9379, option 2.